Hello everybody, today we're doing a video for GTA Car Kits in a 2017 Mercedes S-Class Coupe and this is an S63 in particular. So we have done this vehicle before in a four-door version but many people asked us to do a coupe because the assembly of the center console is a bit different at the back between the rear seats. And today we're going to show you how to install our version 2 of our Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Kit. As you can see it's already installed into this car. It's been paired to iPhone wirelessly. You can also pair it to your Android phone wirelessly. With our system you don't need to wire any extra microphones. The original controls will all still work and control the system. The rear view cameras and surround view cameras will still all work the same. They will not get disabled. You will not lose any functionality from the original system. You just get an extra functions which you didn't have before. And now we're going to show you how to install it into this particular car. So the tools that you're going to need is a T20 Torx, T30 Torx. This is our panel removal tool. This is our hook tool. And of course, you're going to need our product. So we'll begin the installation at the back, in the back seat. So first thing we're going to do is remove this panel by using our panel removal tool at one of the top corners. Then it will tilt and at the back here there's one connection that you have to unclip you can use your hook tool to unclip it and then just disconnect so next you gotta make sure that this compartment is closed and that way you're gonna see these two t20 torque bolts that we're going to remove now you can grab this panel lift it and there is a light here that you need to disconnect so we're not actually going to disconnect it but we're just going to tilt it and we will remove the whole thing so it's held on these clips so that's what we did because it's easier to do it this way instead of trying to disconnect it with that panel removed now you see four bolts so there's two silver ones on the inside and two black ones on the outer side and that's where we're going to use our t30 torx and remove all four of them With the bolts removed, now we can move on to the next step, which would be to disconnect these connections. So there is the blue one on this side. There is a clip at the bottom that you have to press. And once you press it, you're able to take that connection out. There you go. Then there's a black one here. And then this one has this little clip on the side. You need to press. We're doing this so we can remove the center console, otherwise it's going to be held back by these wires. And we're also going to unclip these wires from the bottom and I'll show you what I did later because it's hard to see. It's pretty much there are these clips, well, you can see them kind of. And they hold these wires in place. So now that it's been disconnected, then the wires are free from the center console. And now we can continue with removal in the front of the car. Now at the front here, first thing we'll do is unclip this cup holder. So there's just a clip right there. Then we can remove the rubber mat. And underneath, if you look inside, there are two T30 torque bolts. There's one right here and one over there. And we're going to remove them both. And now we can use a magnet to pull them out. There's one of them. This is the second one. Next, we will open this compartment right here, and on the side, there's one bolt right here. That's a T20, same on the other side, another T20, and we have to remove them both. Now we can grab this compartment, and we'll just pull out. And on the back, there's a connection, which you have to press this clip and disconnect it. So with all the bolts removed, the next step would be to remove the center console. And there are two hooks that hold it in the front. So in order to remove it, you're going to lift it up at the back. And you're going to move it towards the back of the car. But you got to be very aware that at the back here, there's very sharp metal. And that can scratch your interior. So you have to be very careful. Once you do that, and when it's far back, then underneath here, you'll see that there is one connection that is still connected. And there's a clip here that you have to press in order to unclip this connection. So there the clip is right there. 
And at this point, the center console, there's nothing attached to it because we removed these wires, as you remember before, at the back, the yellow and the blue. And that's the two clips that uh, I unclipped at the bottom, which you were hard to see. So at this point, you can either leave the center console like this, or we're gonna take it out of the car to make it easier for us to install everything. So this is our head unit and it's held on by these two locks. We're gonna use our T20 Torx in order to unlock the locks. So there are two bolts and you don't have to remove them fully. You just need to move them a little bit more than halfway so the lock gets loose. Same on this side. And now you can just pull on the head unit. It will come out. And these are the connections that we're going to be connecting in the back. This is the main quad lock harness and this is our video cable. So now we're going to show you what comes in our kit. So inside our kit, you're going to see you have your main module. This is going to get hidden underneath the center console. You have your wireless antenna. We also have this cable for video. So this single end will plug in at our module. These two will be at the back of the head unit. This is for sound. Over here, this is auxiliary cable also for sound. This is our main quad lock harness. And this is a USB cable which is used for wired CarPlay or wired Android Auto. And it's also gonna be used for updates. So we will first disconnect the quad lock harness. There's a clip here that you have to unclip and then unlock the lock. And from this original quad lock harness, we're gonna transfer over the fiber optic cable. So we will use our hook tool to unlock this little clip here. And then once you unlock it, you can grab onto the, the fiber optic cable and disconnect it. This is our quad lock harness that came with the kit. So the female end, that's where we're gonna plug in our original quad lock. So make sure that the lock is unlocked and then you insert it almost all the way in and then you lock it in place so it has to be flush like that and then this end this will go to the head unit and here we have to plug in the fiber optic cable into it and this will go into the back of the head unit same thing you have to unlock the lock make sure that this quad lock is going in straight once it's all the way in we will lock it in place so this video cable is the one that we have to disconnect actually underneath it's labeled as video so it has the small clip that you have to press and then you're able to disconnect it there you go so this is the video cable that came with our kit so as we mentioned earlier it has one male end and the other end has a male and a female so this will be at the back of the head unit so the original one will go into the female and this is ours and it will go in the back of the head unit so with the head unit removed now you have these two extra wires so this is the video and this one is the harness cable so both of these have to be underneath the center console in order to do that we're going to run them behind this plastic panel and we will bring them out on the side here so there's quite a lot of space, so it's not that difficult to do. So we will pull these wires through and neatly arrange the extra quad lock harness. So there's space for the head unit to go back in its place. Once you made sure that the locks can lock, then everything is fine at the back. You don't need to rearrange anything. But if you don't have enough space, then it means that you need to move the quad lock either towards the passenger or the driver's side to make some extra space. And there's some space below, actually there, below the head unit. As you can see, our head unit goes all the way. And now we're gonna continue with connecting these wires into our module. So this is our module. And on this end, before connecting the power harness, you gotta make sure that the switches are set correctly. For S-Class, you're supposed to turn on switches number four and five. So we'll just switch them on. And at this point, you can connect the power harnesses. So there's the two power harnesses. And this is our video cable. Make sure that it goes all the way in. 
and what you're left with is that you need to connect the antenna and the USB. The USB will show you how we will run it into our center console. This is also the auxiliary cable that we will run into center console for sound and you got to make sure that you plug it into the correct spot because there is one auxiliary here but that's not the right one it's also marked as microphone but the correct one is here it's marked as auxiliary so we'll plug it in here make sure again it's all the way in and this end along with our USB this is what we're gonna run into the center console and the last thing that we have to connect to our module is the wireless antenna so this is what the antenna looks like and make sure that you don't stick it to the module and you don't stick it to anything metal and this particular car you can just kind of tuck it in here behind the carpet at this point you can rearrange the wires and in this car this is where the module will stay the center console will go on top of it there's plenty of space for it not to interfere with anything here you got to make sure that these extra wires for the harness and the two the harness and the two video cables are not in the way of these two openings for the bolts this is where we secure the console back and at this point we'll also secure the head unit back in place so these as mentioned before these two wires now we need to get in the center console in the armrest compartment but before we bring the center console back in place and start putting everything back you got to make sure that when you're putting the center console back that these wires do not get jammed here by this uh, metal piece from the center console and that this wire for the light doesn't get damaged so we're going to stick the light deep and then this these wires which is going to keep somewhere around here and as i mentioned before our goal is to feed the usb and the auxiliary wire into the center console so this is our center console and we're just going to explain what we're going to do so we need to run a wire so we can use one of these usbs for sound and then we also need our usb to be in the center console so you can remove this piece right here and you can use this existing hole in order to feed the wires through so we're just going to move the foam out to the side and now we have opening here and another option that you have is to drill a hole a little bit lower so you can bring out the wires through there and then once you put the plastic piece back here then the hole will be hidden so we're going to use the original hole and then we'll just fit the plastic piece over it so these are our two wires that we're just going to feed through there you go and that's it for now in the center console we're getting close for testing and uh, reassembling the center console back so don't forget to connect this connection back and at this point we're gonna start lowering the center console on top of our module so we're gonna be inserting the center console and make sure that it's tilted and now because there are two locks and they have to go in and once it's locked in then you can lower the center console here you're also gonna put this piece back it pops off it's a, like surround around the head unit so there are two clips at the top and three at the bottom so that's the way it's supposed to go back in not vice versa so it just clips on so these are our two wires so we will connect the wire for sound so we'll go into our adapter that came with the kit and we will plug it into USB 1 that's what we're going to be choosing on the car media interface one and then at this point you can put the wires to the side so this piece you can just clip in so we'll also reinstall these connections at the back of the center console they need to be all connected in order for us to test the kit before we bolt everything down so we want to connect them except for this blue one for the vents that one you don't need but the but the yellow one the blue one and the small black one reinstall them and now we can test everything before we assemble it back so now we'll do some testing so we'll turn on the ignition and we're first gonna test our iPhone by a wired connection so this is our USB which we ran to the center console we're just connecting a MFI certified lightning cable into it and then on the original system the first thing that you're gonna do is you gotta go 
into media and we're gonna choose media interface one as that's where we plugged in our kit and it's gonna say USB aux we're gonna choose it and the time is just gonna be rolling at this point you can press and hold the back button here and you're gonna see the screen change and it's gonna give you this extra mode which you didn't have before and at this point we can just connect our iPhone and then CarPlay comes on and you're just gonna make sure that the controls are working properly and you will test the music so the music is working at this point everything is fine you're also gonna press hold the back button and that's the original Mercedes system so at this point once the testing is completed now we can assemble everything back after testing now we can start assembling everything back so we already showed you how to reinstall this trim piece around the head unit now we need to reinstall the two original bolts back so we're gonna use our magnetized screwdriver in order to get those bolts in there that's one Now we can put the rubber piece back along with the cup holders and just lock them in place. Next is the storage compartment. So we're gonna connect this connection at the back here. Just clip it in. Now we'll push this piece in. Make sure that the holes line up for the bolts and we're gonna reinstall the two bolts. So we showed you how to connect all these connections because we, need to, we needed to do them for testing. So that will stay connected, but now we need to reassemble the bolts. So we will start with the two silver bolts. They go here on the inside. There's one. And now the two black bolts. So they go on the outer. And now we will use our T30 Torx to tighten them. So after the four bolts, this is the piece that we have to reinstall back. And first we need to reinstall the light inside of it. So these, this is our light and you're going to see that this light it has a short end and the long end right here. So it's different, it's not symmetrical. So you have to keep that in mind when you're putting it back into this small little panel so when it's facing like this the longer end has to be on the right so that's it's hard to show but that's how i'm going to plug it in so this is how the light's supposed to look when it's properly installed so it's flush and it's just clipped in at the back and now we are ready to put this panel back. So this is the way it goes. Line it up with two holes. So there's one hole right here and one over there. And you're supposed to have this opening. That means it's installed correctly. So you can test the compartment, make sure that it slides out and slides easily. Then it tells you that this piece is installed correctly. And then you can secure it with the two bolts. So there's two openings for them. And the final piece are the vents so you have to do the connection and then you have to first insert the bottom edge and tilt it forward and just clip it in at the back so at this point the installation has been completed and we have paired through the settings our iphone wirelessly you can also pair your android phone wirelessly and as i mentioned before you can control it with the original controls here again this was a video for gta car kits i hope you liked it and we'll see you next time